Hey everybody, so here's the deal. Uh, a couple of you guys didn't get this lesson yet and so that everybody's on track um, when we start online on Monday, um, I wanted to give you a heads up on um, what the other class had already learned. So take a look at this first problem. Um, it's called jumping jackrabbits. Um, you'll see this picture here where there's a rabbit jumping over a wall, right? The rabbits jumped eight feet horizontally and jumped over this vertical wall. Now what I told the other class to do is take this image, imagine this image, and then draw it on an XY um, graph or XY axis. Well, like what would that image look like? Like, so for instance, just graphify this image. Like how, well, how would you do that, right? Um, and uh, the other class, just to give you a heads up on like kind of what they were thinking, they were thinking of one of two options, right? So they were thinking of possibly, you know, um, an X, Y axis that looks like this, right? Um, and then thinking, you know, kind of like the way the picture is, maybe having like the ground be the X axis and then this Y being the, you know, the, the wall that the, the bunny is jumping over, right? Um, so it would look something like this, sorry about that. Um, it would look something like that, where it would kind of start over here, um, you know, reach that height of three, right? Um, and then go over there, right? Um, and if I asked them to like label it, they would have labeled it, you know, like this is negative four, um, this is positive four, right? Um, and then this up here would be a three, right? Because, you know, he's jumped from total eight, right? So that would have to equal eight and it has to jump up three, right? So that would that would have been option um, one, right? The other option I saw a lot of people do is something that looked a little bit more like this. So again, x, y axis. Um, but instead of starting at the negative side and going over to the positive side, some people thought like, well, what if I did something like this, right? Where um, this would be zero and then this would be eight. Then I asked them, well, what about like, what about this distance, right? Um, they would say, well, this is also three, but I would be like, well, what X value? And the, they would say, well, because this is kind of like halfway between zero and eight, um, this point or like the height of this would be at um, four comma three, right? And then these are the, the options that people would draw in class. Um, now, both of them seem like they would work, right? Um, both make sense, right? They're not going like below the x-axis or going into negative territory, right, in terms of y. But when you think about it, if, if the x-axis is the horizontal distance that this rabbit jumped, starting at negative four seems a little in, uh, just a little off, right? Um, just because of the fact that, again, starting from a negative distance and then going to a positive distance um, just doesn't make sense. Also, if I'm, um, eventually going to you know maybe get an equation out of this um, say for instance I want to find out where is this rabbit um, when it's one foot off the ground um, having an answer come back negative wouldn't make much sense right so that's why I'm, I'm going to think that this probably would be a better you know graph version of you know the, the entire situation um, so really what we're trying to do here is use what we know about um, graphs um, of Parabolas use what we know about um, writing a graph in vertex form, uh, especially from you know uh, knowing how to at least graph that. So I want to backtrack a little bit and model this rabbit jump with an actual equation. So now that we've graphified it and found a model or a graph that kind of makes sense for what the the rabbit jumped, um, I would I would like actually to come up with an equation that kind of uh, finishes and models this. So that is what I'm going to do. So now that we kind of know the vertex of it, I can kind of, for the most part, write this in, in vertex form. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just write this vertex form, right? Um, it's y equals a um, x minus h squared plus k. Um, and the vertex again um, is 4 comma 3. So the h value would be, you know, dealing with a 4 because um, if we have a parabola shifted over 4 and then up 3, that would turn into a 4 and then that k would turn into a 3. Um, so this would end up looking something like this a um, x. I know you want to say plus four, but it's opposite again. It's x minus four squared plus three, okay? Um, now, what about this a or this stretch factor, right? Now, I know that this is negative. So for instance, if you look over here on the left side of my screen, I'm gonna type in what would that look like? Y equals um, negative x minus four um, 
quantity squared plus three. Uh, I know you can't see the equation part on your screen, but if you take a look at it right now, you'll notice that, again, um, I definitely nailed down the, the four and the three. Um, if I leave A negative, it'll flip upside down. But the problem here is, is that my x-intercepts don't necessarily match up with you know the x-intercepts that I want, which are zero and eight. So I need to you know figure out what A actually is. So here is how I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the x-intercepts, either you know 0, 0 or 8, 0 here, um, as my x and y that I can plug in here to solve for a. So just real quick, let me uh, amend this. So this again is 0, 0, right? Um, this guy would be 8, 0. Um, I'm either going to plug in 0, 0 or 8, 0. So let me, let me plug in 0, 0, for instance. Um, 0 for y, 0 for x. So 0 here. Um, zero here and what I'm gonna do is solve for a so I'm gonna you know do parentheses and square this and this is gonna be multiplied to a so let's just see here zero minus four is um, negative four right and negative four squared is 16 so it's gonna be a times 16 plus 3 I know this looks weird so technically you could think of this as 16 a plus three, um, 16a and a times 16 is the same thing. Um, I'm gonna subtract three on both sides. So I'll cancel that and I'm gonna get negative three equals 16a. Um, divide both sides by 16 and a, first of all is negative, which is what I want, right? Because again, then I know that the, the parabola is opening down, but that specific fraction is gonna be what it's gonna need for my you know arms of the, the parabola to open up the way they're supposed to. So I'm gonna add that to my Desmos. I know you can't see that, but watch as my graph changes. So I'm gonna do minus three over 16 out front. And you'll notice that now my x-intercepts are matched perfectly to um, the parabola that I you know had modeled in this picture of this of, of this rabbit jump. So um, my final answer, if I was looking for the exact equation of this rabbit jump, would be um, y equals um, the negative three sixteenths um, x minus four squared, um, and then plus three would be the you know the final actual equation. Okay. So I want to give you the opportunity to try one as well. And then you can, you know, pause your video and then I'll go over the explanation um, as well. So um, here is the second um, thing that I showed the class. Um, it looks something like this. So same idea, but this time we are going to um, have a ship shooting water um, onto this burning building, right? Um, and uh, it's probably easier if you want to think of it just like the other one to think of it, you know, reversed so that it's actually shooting from the left and landing to the right, um, just so that it's very similar to the, the rabbit idea. Um, so why don't you take a second, model this the same way we did with the, the rabbit jump with zero, zero as the beginning of, you know, this water spray. Um, label the points, find that vertex, put the equation in vertex form, and then actually come up with an equation that models um, this particular um, projectile motion situation, right? So pause the video and then go ahead and do that. And All right, so you've done the problem. Let's see how you did. So first off, talking about the modeling aspect of it. So I have my x and y axis. I am going here and here, similar to last time, except this time it's going to be 0, 0. And not 8, 0 this time, it's going to be 120 and 0. Um, the reason the 120, it's because, again, it went 120 feet, right? Um, now, the water does reach a height of 50, right? Um, but um, just saying 50 isn't good enough, I would actually need to know what the x location is um, so I can know, know both of these parts of this coordinate, right? So I definitely know that this part is 50 because that's how high it is. The question is, what would this part be? And again, just like last time, it's gonna be halfway between zero and 120. So this one would have to be um, 60, okay? So we got 60, 50 as my vertex. If I start out writing in um, vertex form, don't know what A is yet, but I do know that x minus 60 quantity squared plus 50 will at least give me a parabola that gets me the vertex at 60, 50, okay? Now I'm gonna plug in a point, 
and it really doesn't matter which one I use. Um, this time I'm going to use the 121. You could have also used 00. zero. Um, I'm going to plug in 0 for y and 120 for x. So here we go. 0 equals, um, whoops, a 20 minus 60 squared plus, whoops, sorry, I'm getting used to this pen. I'm going to try this out. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to subtract 50 to the other side. Okay, this is going to cancel and we get negative 50 equals A. Um, I'm going to at the same time do 120 minus 60 squared. So that's going to end up being um, 60 squared, which is 3,600. Um, I'm going to divide both sides by 3,600. And this is the fraction. Now it can be reduced a little bit, but this is the fraction that's going to get me um, the exact parabola. Okay. Now um, you could reduce this a little bit more. One of the tricks is again because they both have zeros. Is technically you could you know reduce it like that, like five um, into 360 is the same as 50 into 3,600. Um, they both can be reduced a little bit more. Like I can divide both of these by five, and I believe. Um, let me just double check on my calculator right now. Um, but three. 60 um, divided by 5 would be 72. So really this could be rewritten as negative 1 over um, 72 if you want to reduce this fraction even more, okay? Um, so let me just real quick type that in and see if this is actually modeled correctly. Y equals negative 1 over 72. Um, we got X um, minus 60 quantity squared. Um, and then plus 50. Um, and I'm gonna have to zoom out on my graph here to kind of make sense of all this. Here we go. Um, the first thing I notice again is that the vertex is at 60, 50. Um, I have a 120 um, x-intercept as well as a zero x-intercept, okay? So my final equation, if I were to model this perfectly, um, is going to be y equals, um, I'm gonna use the reduced fraction if that's okay with you guys. Um, x minus 60 quantity squared um, and then plus 50. So um, in total you can now use what you know a little bit about vertex form not to only sketch things written in vertex form but to look at a parabola for instance and get an equation that matches it and not only just the equation that kind of matches it but an exact equation um, using this method of you know plugging in uh, another point other than the vertex to go ahead and find that stretch factor or that a value so hopefully this uh, makes a little bit of sense to you um, and you guys have a wonderful day i will see you guys on monday all right toodaloo bye